Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Wickliff Agumba. I'm happy to take us through this chapter four of uh, Mastering Shiny. Um, it's a very, very interesting chapter to me and I believe most of us because uh, it's a kind of bringing into practice what we have covered in chapters one, two, and three, which has basically been introduction to the um, to the to the shiny app and looking at both the user interface in chapter two and uh, um, and the server side of the app in chapter three. So here is a case study where we are putting the two into test. Well, um, the case study is about emergency uh, room uh, injuries or emergency report injuries. That's the ER here. Um, so objectives of this is to create a more complex shiny app. Um, of course, maybe not the most complex, but uh, garnering all that we've learned, we'll be able to have some at least more complex uh, shiny app than what we've done before. Then get an idea on how to build uh, your app, my app, our apps, based on our data exploration. Um, I mean, we all work in different sectors, some medical, some engineering, some biological, some social, but then data is data. So with this, I hope uh, we'll be able to bring that kind of data we have, diverse kind of data we have to uh, an interactive platform like a shiny app. Then learn how to create the app step by step. Of course, bulk of this we've covered in two and three chapters, two and three, but now uh, it's also part of the objective of this chapter to be able to create our apps step by step. Um, lastly, is to get more comfortable using the techniques we've learned so far. Well, so um, starting with the introducing this is that the chapter is about building a more complex app with the tools we've learned in the previous chapters. And uh, the packages which we are going to use today are beyond just Shiny. We'll need Vroom uh, or V-R-O-O-M. I think it's Vroom. It's pronounced Vroom and then Tidyverse um, packages. So, of course, Tidyverse uh, is a group of several packages that we normally use in wrangling, wrangling and visualizing uh, data in R. And Vroom is for the speed of uh, reading in data. Um, so, uh, somebody who has not installed this might find it difficult to follow up, but uh, maybe later or some other time you can install the second and the third uh, packages to be able to go through the uh, chapter. Um, the data, as I've said, is an interesting one because, uh, okay, it's interesting if something accidental has not happened to you as a person, but I mean, it's interesting that it's creating curiosity on what actually is going on with accidents or those uh, emergency related uh, incidents that occur, especially in the US. So we'll be exploring data from the National Electronic Injury Surveillance System, uh, abbreviated as NEIWS, which covers accidents reported from a sample of hospitals in the US or in the USA. So uh, for those who are not working in the medical sector like myself, some of the terminologies used in diagnosis may not be good, uh, easy to understand for us, but yeah, data is data. It's all about the data type. If it's an integer, it's an integer. It doesn't matter whether you are in medical or you are in uh, social. If it's a, a factor, it's a factor. If it's a, a character, it's a character. So we'll handle data the best way we can. And uh, the data, the data set has got uh, information about an injured person uh, in terms of the date the report was taken, the age of the person. Uh, gender or sex, race, uh, body part that was injured, diagnosis from the doctor or the medical personnel, and then the location where the accident occurred. 
um, as well as primary product associated with the injury, like what caused the injury or what is the primary product, as in what was the main tool or object involved in the accident or that led to the accident, and then a brief story um, how the accident occurred. Uh, very, very important is that I found the brief stories to be very interesting and uh, probably creating more questions about what might have happened or bringing more clarity on what might have happened during the accident. Mm. That's why even when accident occurs on the road, the police officers don't just come and take pictures and do the measurements and all those, the speed of the vehicle, the direction of movement, but they're also interested in the narratives of the people who are around there. The journalist would give some report like, I saw this doing this when that the driver lost control this way. So these kinds of narratives are also interesting in understanding and appreciating the kind of numbers and figures we get in the data set. Um, further, we have weight, um, attribute for an estimation, how many people um, the current case represents if the data set was scaled to the entire US. Um, yeah, because the data we said is a representative sample of accidents occurring in the US. So it is not all the accidents, but a representative sample. So weight is brought in. Uh, this is not weight of the person who was involved in the accident, but this is a, a, um, a variable which is used to kind of uh, bring uh, the occurrences or uh, transform or translate the occurrences we have to represent as a representation of the whole country. Um, so to download this data, we use, there is some code provided in the book to download the data and store it in your local directory, in your local computer machine. And then uh, it's a simple function. And then this, the function is just built to pick the URL and paste the name of the objects. Uh, from the repository by Hadley, and then you get the data loaded in your uh, directory. Uh, Dir.create here is just to create the directory called N-E-I-S-S. -S. You can give it any name you prefer, and then it creates a subdirectory in your working directory to hold the data in which the data will be uh, stored. And uh, the main data in that uh, folder or in that uh, uh, set of data sets will be the injuries data set, which has um, this kind of structure, having the treatment date, that is the date when the patient was seen in the hospital by a medical personnel, age, gender, or sex, uh, race, uh, body part involved in the accident, diagnosis, and location, um, as well as a product code and a waiting a variable which is used to weight these incidences that if a male person white head upper trunk as the body part involved and all this what is the likelihood that this would occur or if this were to occur throughout the country how many people would be involved in the us like 77 or something so that's the weighting factor then we also have products uh products here are the items that the primary item that was involved that was used or that was involved in causing the injury to the person or to the individual. So it's also a uh, tab separated values or TSV uh, file. And then it has only two columns. Uh, that is the product ID and, uh, and the title of that product. So if it is ID 464, then it was knives that was involved in the accident. If you look at the injuries, we have a product code. So this product code column can be married to this uh, product uh, data set to know which, which product was this. I mean, it will be too cumbersome to have all this. It will be too untidy <laughs> to say, to have all these descriptions written here instead of just having the code and some lookup table to bring the codes to life by adding the uh, actual objects. <clears throat> then we have also population data. Uh, yeah, so this population data can also help in the weighting using these weights to know uh, how many people were 
of this age, for example, zero or, or female or male and all that. So those are the three data sets. If I turn to this, I loaded the three packages using Pacman payload. Uh, I could use library, shiny library, room library, tidyverse, but I prefer to use this. And then uh, downloading the data, I already ran this, but uh, something probably if somebody noticed that it was not working when uh, this main was set to master. Um, I think that's what we have in the book. Um, in the book, it is written master. So this one should be corrected to main, uh, but in the slides here, it's uh, main. So uh, if you have that set to master, then the, the, the link will not be able to access the data and download it into your working directory. But if you change it to main, then it works. So since I already downloaded the data, I have them in my working directory called NACE, then I don't need to uh, run that. So that's why I just edit, uh, uh, commented out. Then the names of the files to be downloaded, I provided them here in a list, in a vector, and then, um, used this function download which i created here uh just the same same function we have in the book and then applied it on the vector list of name by par uh, package and that downloaded the all the three data sets and put them in the nace directory and then uh, <clears throat> um we can also use for loop, whichever way you want to loop through to get all the data downloaded and stored in the object, uh, in the working directory. Then we have the object names. That is now to read the files from the directory into R. Um, so I created the object uh, which contains the names of individual objects I want, and then Using the assign function, we loop through all of them and read them into R. We could provide actual names like injuries gets this, injuries population gets that, products gets that, like, uh, like so. You assign it to read something and then you provide what you are reading or room for that matter, because we are now using room, room and you apply it. But if I've just looped it so that if we had more than maybe 20, uh, 20 CSV files or TSV or whichever files in our directory, and we want to read them into R. We don't need to say object this, object that, object that, object that, and then 20 of them to vroom, 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 vroom into R. You can just loop them and assign them the object names which you provide in an object so that we don't repeat ourselves. Um, uh, we can check, for example, the head of products. So exactly what we have the other side after reading them into R. And then uh, we can explore. I think this is the next thing that we're going to do after getting the data into R and uh, doing the exploration. Um, is there any question about getting this data from the GitHub repository by Hadley into your working directory and yeah reading them into R. Silence means fine. Chat, no comment in the chat, okay. <clears throat> well uh so we can we have checked the head of products we can check the head of population which is another uh, object we created uh we can check the head of uh, i mean just the first six rows of uh, injuries um and then we see the data set having the date uh, the age the race sex and all that um Yeah, so uh, to explore this data further, I mean, there are so many ways we can skim it, we can glimpse it, we can do all manner of, uh, all very clear. Thank you, Jim. 
we can do all manner of ways to see uh, because we've loaded the tidyverse, we have deep, uh, deep layer having this glimpse. So we can glimpse, for example, injuries to see uh, the data types, which ones are characters, which ones are doubles, which ones are dates, and then how can we, uh, the kinds of uh, analysis which we can apply on them, of course, depends on the object types we have there. I am just saying about schema, so we can also use this package called schema, uh, one of my favorites also just to skim through to see uh, sometimes also the distribution uh, taking a bit of time, like the skewness and all these kinds of histogram about the data, the percentiles, the 50th and all that about the data. So it gives more information about the data, the number of rows, the number of columns. Yeah, how many are characters, how many are dates, how many numeric, how many are factors and all that. So we can explore, we can visually or interactively look at the data before we do any analysis. Okay. Um, to explore the data, the book recommends that we enjoy about uh, some information about the toilets as the, uh, the place where accident occurred, injuries or something like that occurred in the, which occurred in the toilets. Um, of course, the motivation is to build an app, but uh, toilets became an interesting one to see how accidents, uh, I mean, all of us use toilets, <laughs> I, I assume, <laughs> and then uh, it's one place that sometimes we be very careful while stepping into so that we don't hit ourselves on the floor or um, injure our face or our legs or something like that, because, yeah we come into contact with some water and slipperiness of the room or something like that. So it's a place that was fascinating to, uh, to, to study or to, to interact with in this app. So we can wrangle that a bit by taking our injuries data set and only filtering where uh, product code is 649. So, this 649 probably uh, one had already checked on the products uh, data file, data set, to know that uh, 649 is referring to toilets. The title of 649 code is toilets. So whenever you are filtering for the 649 code from the data set, you are picking accidents that actually occurred with the toilets being the major uh, uh, product. Then we can check the number of rows. We can do all manner of things. So this selected is going to be a subset of the injuries data set. Um, if we check the dimensions of injuries data set, uh, we see 255,000 uh, records. But if we take a small section of that, which we call selected, it's already here. If we take injuries and we pipe it into a filter function in which we pick where product code is 649, then we are going to have uh, less, less records. And then maybe we check the dimensions. Only 2000. So we are going to play around with this 2000, around 3000 records instead of playing around with 255,000 records. And then we will see how picking this small subset can help us now to create a loop or create a, an app, which will help us to pick any other um, product, not only the toilets. Um, so en checking the end rows of the selected, we can check selected and count for location by waiting. So, what this is doing is that we want to know um, from the selected subset, um, we want to count for the, for, the, for the location. That is, we want to group by locations, and then we count uh, how many locations were involved, and we sum uh, the weights. We, we, we bring this to the whole of uh, the US to know if this was to happen throughout the USA, how many uh, 
people will be involved. Yeah. So, so um, if it were throughout the US, then 99,000 records would be, or individuals would be having accidents occurring in the toilets at home that are located at home. Other public places would be 18,000. So most of the toilets, uh, most of the accidents or accidents involving toilets occur at home. I think it's, I don't want to say that we are less careful when going to the toilets at home than when we are in school or somewhere else, but it's just that I think most people prefer to use the toilets they have at home. And therefore, if any accident was to occur in the toilet, then it would be uh, more at home than any other place. Then if we look at, of course, remember selected only talks about the toilet. So we, we've left out, you call it restroom. Maybe some of us don't prefer the word toilet, restroom, gents, and all that. Um, the body parts involved, accidents in the toilet largely involve the face or the head, sorry. So maybe you slip and hit your head on the uh, on the floor or somewhere, or the lower trunk that's towards the abdomen or those areas of the body, the face, upper trunk, <laughs> yeah. So in that order, I mean, in descending order. So head is the most exposed part when we are having uh, when we are having accidents or in case of accidents in the in the toilet. Uh, in terms of diagnosis, uh, not stated, I was surprised that other or not stated um, was the most predominant body part injured, as in people didn't want to say which body part was involved. Uh, yeah. No, diagnosis, uh, like, uh, yeah, this is diagnosis. People didn't want to uh, or doctors didn't state the diagnosis which was done, or yeah, examination, uh, followed by contusion or abrasion. And this is where I said, if you are not in the medical field or if we are not in the medical field, some of these terms, laceration, uh, dislocate, hematoma, uh, avulsion. I mean, some of these are quite medical, but we are interested in just knowing uh, looking at the data in the face. And then um, the weight here is transferring, is, 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 is pushing this data to the whole nation, not only the sample we are talking about, representative sample of the US. Then another exploration we can do is to have a summary of this, uh, which we use the selected and then we can count age, for example, um, age and sex, and then we also weight that. We, we, we apply weight on that. So this summary um, set, we can again plot it uh, to visually um, look at it, see how the pattern goes. For example, we can see that at the early stages of life for young people, boys and girls, or male and female, we realize that more male have injuries in the toilet at the age of about three years than the female. And then as age progresses, as we get to the middle age and all that, more ladies start having accidents in the toilet than men. And then beyond around uh, 80 or 90 years, it all falls down, probably because we, the population, I mean, we don't have so many people getting to 100 years old. So again, the data, the statistics on that starts declining. But I'm surprised uh, that there is this huge difference between um, men and women of around 70, 80, 70 to 80 years old who have accidents in the toilets. In the book, Hadley said uh, this is likely because um, most men do not report to the ER, to the emergency rooms, because of accidents in the toilet. They soldier on. 
and uh, more women uh, tend to report these cases. Not sure whether that is true, but I mean, those are the kinds of hypotheses we can have or assumptions we can make in such a situation. Um, then we can now also control for this because interpreting this direct like this is a bit uh, scary or is a bit awkward. So we can control by using a rate instead of the actual count. So the rate here, we are going to take the N, which is the count, and then we divide it by the population and we multiply by 10,000 so that we are kind of referring to the to a population of 10,000. We are standardizing it. Then that is what we do here. We left join with the population, of course, now linking the selected with the population. And then we can do another plot, which is now slightly different. We are now talking about injuries of 10,000 people. <clears throat> Again, boys still tending to have more injuries, um, like around five or so boys in 10,000 get accidents in the toilet. And this boys and girls mix up until around 50 years when ladies start to have more injuries than uh, female tend to have more injuries than male. Uh, not quite different, but beyond 75 to 80, then women continue to have more injuries in the toilets than men. Hmm. Interesting. Um, Something else we can derive from this is to is the narratives. I think the most important thing to me is the narrative. Is the state, or not really to me, but I mean to everybody. Looking at just numbers 30, 34, 80, 90, whatever percent is just a number. But then if somebody tells you something beyond that number, like I fell from this, I fell on that, it it's it's more, I find it more meaningful. So I just take the selected set and then I sample I sampled around 10 records and then pool narrative. So pool function is just picking that and throwing it into a vector. Uh, so here we get more information, which can be so interesting. And I would wish to read even all of it some other time <laughs> for all the 200 and something thousand records. I would like to get every nitty gritty of this. Like, um, most of them go by YOM, YOM, a number then YOM, a number then YOF. So this is just years old male or years old female. So the number is the age in years. Some of them are even months. So like this is a two-year-old male, uh, per dad. Some, I mean, this per and dad and PT could be medical terms but fell off the toilet hitting mouth on floor. Yeah. So at least you have a picture of what happened. It is not just a record, but you have a picture of, okay, so somebody falling and hitting the mouth uh, on floor. Laceration about 0 0.5 centimeters. And then somebody else, internal der derangement of knee, put foot on toilet to dry off after shower, uh, could not extend knee. So th this, these, are, these are more interesting to me, I think, uh, or to anybody. It's more interesting to get this story around the data than just seeing the hard statistics. At home was on the toilet, somebody who is 91 year old uh, woman or WM, not sure. At home was on the toilet when he tried to get up and fell onto the ground, he yelled for help, one to three hours. Wow. This 91 year old uh, WM, not sure whether that's a woman or man, or it was not identified, yelled for help for one to three hours after, after falling. I mean, all that narratives are interesting and adds more meaning into the data set, to the hard data. Yeah. So that's all in this. Uh, 
what we've seen here is just a single uh, interpretation or look at the data itself, uh, the figures, the graphs, and the narratives. But one would ask, um, this is not the only product we have. If we look at the product's data set, it's not only the toilets. There are those who have accidents in the bathtubs or showers. There are those who have accidents involving knives, uh, sofas, sports, containers, basketball, and 28 more. What about them? How can I easily go back to them? Will it involve going back to the beginning and saying, uh, select this, do that, do that, do that, do that. And then again, select this, do that, do that, do that. Yeah, that's where Shiny comes in. Um, in order to make a prototype or uh, an app, which is going to give us just a way of clicking somewhere. You can just imagine this in your brain that, we click somewhere and we change from toilet to footwear or from toilet to knives. And then all these graphs and all these patterns just pop up in the user in, on the user interface. So that's what we are going to do. Uh, drawing from the uh, UI, which already we talked about earlier um, in chapter two, we have fluid page, we have fluid draw, we have column. Uh, where we want the objects to appear, output to appear. And uh, this for each fluid row, because we can have several rows and columns on the face of our uh, user interface. We can, for each fluid row, we can have several columns. Of course, the maximum being 12. So for each fluid row, we can divide the column into the 12 into any number of numbers we want, provided they sum up to 12. And then we display the plot output. On the server side, we can make a reactive uh, function or expression uh, to avoid duplication, of course. And then we receive, um, we receive the input into the server and then render it. If it's a table, we render table. If it's a, a plot, we render plot. And yeah, like here, we, we render plot, but we have some three tables to render before the plot. Inside the server is where we build the plotting, uh, the ggplot, the lattice, whichever uh, package we use to make the plot. So um, that takes us to this making our prototype. Um, but just before that, we we will be picking products by their titles. Uh, if we look at products uh, object, remove this, we see there is code and there is a, a title. So in the dropdown, which the user will be clicking, we will be clicking things like to to uh, toilets, because this is what we know and we easily um, are acquainted to. But the server should be receiving a number or a double or a code itself. It will take you time to think of 1200 as sports so that you enter 1200 in the user interface. But if you say sports or recreation, then it's easier to pick that and send it to the server. Then the server interprets this as a number and uses that number to uh, filter the injury set. So that's all about these set names so that we have product codes in which the products object, we take the product code and we assign them or we set the names uh, from the title column of the products uh, data frame. So for it's, it's like a named vector, if we can say so. Then, uh, sorry. Then uh, we go ahead with the fluid uh, page, oh, fluid row, fluid page, fluid row, and then the column. Then we provide the choices to be product codes because the product codes now have names which will appear to the user interface. And then the first fluid row, the second fluid row, we will be providing a table output, which is diagnosis, not diagonal. And then we will have a table output for the body part which was involved. 
and we have another table which is location and then we will have the last one which is a plot output this kind of plot so we'll be having three tables and a plot in the out in the user interface i can run that okay something is not found so something which is not found is line 92 and then now we can get it run um after that we are going to the server side on the server side we have input output session and then selected is a reactive so that anytime it will be going to the uh, injury set and picking the product according to the code entered here in the use in the input id then um the output can be diagnosis it can be a body part it can be location and all these are render tables because diagnosis is just all of them are tabular but then we can also summarize this this in which we express it to the whole population we we, we do the weighting and we also take it to an average of 10000 people then we render the plot using the reactive summary created here to uh, to plot a graph like this where we have age and then uh, 10,000 people. So whether it's uh, a body part, whether it's uh, uh, whether it's uh, diagnosis, we will be able to see that for 10,000 people. And then we can run the app using that. Um, can open this in browser. Uh, so that it's a bit clear to most of us. Yeah, so we can see what I meant. With the product side, we have a drop down where we can pick the product, whether it's a toilet, whether it's a trampoline, lines, whether it's a footwear, jewelry, all the products that were involved, the around 48 of them. And then we have the table output showing the diagnosis, the body part, and the location. And below that is a plot. Uh, so if we change, for example, now it's uh, this plot here, which is corresponding to product knives. If we change it to the toilet, which we talked about earlier, then this is the figure we earlier saw, where boys tend to be more exposed to this, and then later on, uh, women get more injured. But uh, this is too too much i mean to see like we are not interested in all this seeing all this up to ear wow some people injure their ears when they have accident in the toilet eyeball uh -huh. yeah this is why i said sometimes the narrative out of it can help you understand some of them uh yeah all things that people do in the toilet or people how somebody which part of the body can be involved in an accident in the toilet is quite uh, crazy well so somebody might say it can be more uh, user friendly if we had something as neat as this one here on the right hand side where we talk of location because we had a few locations but we had body parts that were quite unique elbow different from toe eyeball face different from head so if you have have injury on the head it's not on the face okay. so the face not on the head uh so we, we we could think of having a neater or a shorter summary of this so that those who injure their ear while in the toilet we can lump them into some group and just call them others i mean because they are minority but majority of course they are they can be important if we get the narratives but yeah we are more interested in majority if we need to pass some policies to address the majority. And then for the diagnosis again, the diagnosis of burns and skulls, I don't know where fire comes from in the toilet for the burns. It depends on what somebody is doing there, but uh, it it's listed here. Majority, not stated, contusion. Maybe some of the accidents that occur in the toilet, they uh, are, are quite private and uh, the doctor 
or the, the patient doesn't allow the doctor to share the information with the general public, maybe. Well, so that's the app. Um, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Let's get that. Any question? No question from me. I think I'm okay. okay. Not right now. Okay, okay. So interesting. You can imagine. I mean, if somebody, one of us, has had accident in the toilet in some way or the other, reported or not reported, <laughs> you can relate to some of the things we are seeing in that output. Whether they are a reality, or if you have some boys and girls at home, you can also relate this to how many times your son has said, I got accident in the toilet, than how many times your daughter said, I got accident in the toilet, or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, one body, okay, maybe that body part was also mentioned somewhere, but not clear was that sometimes as boys, when we zip up in the toilet, we can be caught in an awkward situation where you don't know whether you should continue moving the zip up or you take it down. And that can be another painful situation that probably was not captured here. The boys didn't put on zipped trousers or something like that. Anyway, that's a side. Polish tables. So that this is what I meant by trying to uh, summarize the table so that they don't uh, spill everything. They lump um, others into their own grouping and only consider the majority first, and then whatever is left, the left of us are lumped into a group called other or miscellaneous. Um, so we take the injuries, we mutate diagnosis. This is just mutate on the same data set. And uh, we use two functions from forecuts or forecuts package. Fact lamp and okay, FCT lamp and FCT infrac. So FCT infrac works first by uh, ordering uh, the diagnosis, the diagnosis, all of their diagnosis into groups, putting them into grouping them and ordering them from the majority to the least. And then for FCT lamp. It doesn't sound well, but FCT lamp um, does what? It takes the top five from the this ordered group. And then after taking the top five, the sixth one uh, is where all other categories uh, fall. All other remaining levels are grouped into the other. Yeah, so this is the kind of majority uh, wins that we are going to see. And then we group by that diagnosis, and then we summarize as integer by the sum of weight. <clears throat> so um, it's as simple as that. We pass that. Um, so we find that the sixth group becomes uh, uh, other, but the majority Okay, those numbers because I think because of I reduced the screen size, but now you can see the actual numbers for the other not stated fracture, very painful if I can imagine of fractures, laceration, strain or sprain. Um, some of them I don't know. Abrasion I only learned it in geography about erosion and all that probably on the body if you, the skin surface is eroded by pressing it on some surface, then it can also be abrasion in medical terms. And also there is other. And then um, we can create another function, which, uh, or we can put this kind of analysis where we are uh, picking the top five into a function. And this function will now be useful in the iteration, in the in the um, 
in the shiny app or in the server side or on the server side of the app because it's going to be churning all the variable it will be picking the variable given to it mutating it whether it's diagnosis whether it's body part whether it's location it will be doing the same same thing taking the variable and picking the fct in freq and fct lamp so the function created takes a data frame df it takes a variable from that data frame and then also uh, already assigned value of five to the number of records to be retained the top so uh, the the body of the function is the data frame and then it mutates a variable this is something i've not done before like taking double curly braces putting a variable i would think of it as a placeholder waiting for a variable to get in there and then dot equal sign is uh, or colon equal sign is another thing which i've not used before but at least we can understand what the function will be doing is that there is a vacuum created here to receive a variable uh, from the function. And then that variable gets mutated by these two functions we've talked about. And it is the same, same variable, which is ordered by n. And the default value of n is 5. And then grouped by the same, same variable diag. And then weight variable is brought from the DF, from the data frame. So whichever data frame is selected, the same same manipulation is repeated. A good way, because if we provided the variable explicitly, then it means we will be changing that variable every time and again. But here now that it's uh, enveloped here as something to be not yet declared, then um, uh, it becomes easier for the function to iterate. Then, um, so this has nothing to do with the with the input uh, with the user interface, but it's the server side which is going to uh, change. Um, so the count top um, will come in in the output of each of these tables. So it will take the diag. Uh, um, Whenever Diag is entered in the user interface, it will be received here and will be outputted in a render table. And this table will shrink the original table. We will not have the old table by ensuring that there is this lumping and there is this infrac considered on the table. Uh, the weight being 100% is to ensure that the column is maximally occupied by the table. Like there is no huge, huge spaces in between the columns in the user in, on the user interface. Same to body part, same to location. Summary reactive and all this remain the same. So if we run that, then this is our more beautiful table, quite succinct, quite clear that, okay, diag is there, body part is there, location is there, everything left is lumped into the other category. Uh, the top N and the top five are uh, retained. If we change that to toilet or we change it to toilets, then we see things like head being the most exposed, uh, the most affected body part, face, knee, upper trunk, yeah. I mean, it's good we are seeing this for those who have not had accident in the toilet. So we take care of our head. Maybe we wear a helmet while going to the toilet if necessary. <laughs> and then other or not stated as a diagnosis, uh, inter-organ injury. I'm not sure what happens in this case with a broken leg pierces a chest or something like that. A fracture, contrusion, and, and laceration. Yeah. And then, um, of course, we have several other uh, products coming in. And whenever we change that, we see changes on the plot. Okay. Um, this is a bit hidden. Okay, I can skip it. Yeah. Then um, we can also 
bring in the idea of rate. Um, uh, so that uh, it is not about the sample, the sample data itself, but we are now uh, considering the whole country. Yeah, the whole country in which way uh, we don't just see uh, the output from the people who are sampled, but we are also considering if this was to happen throughout the US, uh, how many people are likely to be affected. Um, so that means on the input side, we'll have uh, a column set for that, whether we will where we will decide whether to the input becomes uh, a rate or it becomes a count. And whenever it becomes a rate or it becomes a count, we change the server side. Yeah. So we change the server side in the event that if we put an if function, in which case, if the input is count, we do something else, which means if the input is uh, rate, then uh, we embrace uh, y receives the rate. If it is uh, just the count, y receives just n. The rest remains the same. Uh, so that the, the user can easily toggle that. So we have the user interface, we have the if input and output, and then we have our new app. So this is what is added, uh, the rate or the count. So that is what changes here. If we put the rate, then it is per 10,000 people. Uh, maybe it's not visible completely, but if we choose uh, the count, then it is just the individual figures we got from the sample. We are not referring to the whole US, but just the, 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 the sample that was uh, subjected to the analysis. Uh, narrative, which was my uh, uh, bread and butter, or what I liked about this, is the description or some information about what this data is all about. Yeah, you can see the time is not on our side, but yeah, we are going to talk a little about the, the narrative. Um, so we can also pull the narratives. We can also get the narratives, like adding just a, a flu draw on our user interface, where the user receives an action button, something to click to, to trigger the uh, 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 a story to be pulled from the data set. So an action button here will be labeled story and it, so, sorry, will be identified as story and have, has a label called tell me a story. And then the text output to be received in the server side, on the server side is narrative. Um, because we have this already, we have some stories, we have interesting stories in the data set as in most of the patients were able to explain what happened. Uh, yeah. So we run that. And uh, the narrative uh, side, which we bring in the, on the server side is uh, event reactive, in which when a button is clicked or the action button is clicked, um, then we will be pulling a narrative and we sample just one. So just one narrative will be pulled from the from the selected data set and then printed out, rendered out as text. Um, so we can run our app and uh, see what happens in this case. Uh, still the same, we have knives and all that. We have the rate or count, and then we have the top uh, N and other groups, then uh, the plot. But there is tell me a story action button, which if we click, then 71 year old male slept while using a kitchen stick knife and, <clears throat> and punctured for arm. <sighs> Seriously, people get accidents differently. And then 25 year old male with LAC to hand from knife. LAC, not sure whether it's a laceration. Uh, 29 year old female using knife to cut plastic tie and stabbed hand. Yeah, more interesting than just the figures to me. 
uh, but that is just for the knife. I mean, if we can have a glimpse for the toilet side, uh, 89 year old uh, female, knee contusion, her daughter was preparing her to take a bath when she accidentally struck knee against Komode. Hmm. Yeah, so sorry to the daughter and the, the, the lady. Um, yeah, we've, we've seen that. That's, we can add, we can, we can also pull the text from this. And this changes when we click the action button or if we change the, the data input here this will change. Um, the last bit, which uh, in the remaining three minutes, which I wanted to, which I felt interesting to add is a word cloud. A word cloud is where we take the text and then remove the numbers, we remove the uh, stop words uh, for those who have used it. And then we generate a narrative some interesting narrative out of the stories that people tell. So uh, instead of just the, the narrative part of it, I, hmm, let me put it here. Yeah, this one here. I added an action button for the word cloud to be plotted, um, in which case we could generate some word cloud too. To, to to pimp our uh, uh, our shiny app, but I also realized that we don't use render plot for word cloud, uh, not really render plot, but uh, plot output. But we use word cloud to output function, which is in the word cloud to uh, package, and I gave it an ID of uh, cloud. <clears throat> so. The, the narrative and the story remain the same on the user interface. Uh, sorry, we need to terminate that before we run this. Mm -hmm. Word cloud do not found. So yeah, I need to either add the word cloud to call it explicitly from there. That means, I will, yeah. Then on the server side, what I did was to provide the, uh, uh, another reactive function, event reactive, which I named word cloud sample, just to bring it close to narrative sample, in which um, we receive the word cloud ID and then bring the selected data set, which would be having also the narrative column. We select the narrative column, we unnest the tokens, uh, and then we use get stop words from tidy text and anti-join it with that so that we remove all the stop words like of, in, at, on, the, those words, we don't need them, we need the actual words. And then we count word and sort them and then we filter those that are greater than 10 because word that just appear once, we don't need it to cloud our word cloud. And then we lastly plot our word cloud too and uh, Render word cloud to it is not render plot. Uh, yeah. So if we run that and we run this, we have this um, other output in which now we also have something, uh, some word cloud and under uh, the plot. So when we change this, let us move to the toilet. Let us go to the washroom. Uh, in the toilet, fell toilet, head, heat, pain. Those are the words, those are the key things. It doesn't matter what happened in the toilet. Generally, it's about somebody falling in the toilet, on the toilet by their head and feeling pain. And year old female, so YOF is year old female. So the numbers were removed in the stop words. It appears before we could hardly see year old male. Oh, year old male is here, but I think year old female uh, appears uh, 538 times and the old male 283 times. So you can already see that more female were falling in the toilet. A very, very, okay, it was interesting to me to add this into the, onto the app. Uh, not only tell me a story and a story changes and a story changes, but also have uh, some interaction with the 
with the all words that are in this uh, selected data set. If we change it, everything changes. If it's on rugs, um, there was one involving bicycles. Okay, it doesn't matter whether it's swimming, it's all about swimming, pain in the ear, otitis, I mean external, external or something like that. Yeah, ear, you can imagine pain in the ear when you're swimming, water is doing something there. A pool is also another term which is quite common. So swimming pool, pain in the ear, yeah. Yeah, so I think that brings us to the end of the chapter, trying to uh, come up with a nice shiny app. I, I, I believe it is still not uh, meeting the expectations of what every one of us is dreaming of come end of this uh, uh, training. But I mean, we are in, I hope we are in the right direction to end up uh, having some nice output. Uh, from this cabinet fell head laceration and all that. So yeah, if there is